Hello students, welcome to Virginia State University. We're going to go over Banner at this time. I'd like to thank Mr. Andrew Tran, who is in our engineering program. He's also a student technology ambassador uh, for helping with this presentation. I'm Dr. Colleen Taylor and my colleague is Shala. Uh, Ms. Shala, we'll call her. Her last name is difficult to pronounce. Um, we're from, um, she's from Technology Services, okay? So Mishala and I have put together this presentation for you um, with the help of Mr. Tran. So Banner is really important for you to visit because you're going to need to check your classes. Okay. So the main webpage and this link is live. If you're able to get a copy of this presentation, you can just click here or type that into your URL bar to get to the main page of Virginia State University. Uh, the Trojan link is located on top as a gateway to most of the technology services that we're going to cover uh, today and um, in this recording. On the top, you'll see banner is the first link that you see under important links. I also want to draw your attention to the how to's, the student help desk. Should you have any difficulty, this is uh, the number you would contact. Um, they can always direct you to the right department. Um, and down here is the link for setting up your Active Directory, um, which you may not be able to do if you are not uh, cleared in Banner. And we'll talk about that in a minute, okay? So remember the how-tos are located here should you get lost. Okay, so we're gonna click on Banner and begin. This is the login page for Banner. Um, if you uh, go ahead and click on this link and you can go directly to it and bookmark the page and that way you don't have to keep going through the Trojan link if you don't want to. Uh, the user ID is your full V number. Make sure you use a capital V and make, you, make sure you use zero, zero and not capital O's. Um, so this particular number is given to you when you are admitted to the university by mail. Your PIN number is initially your birth date the six digit pin, um, so the last two of the year. Um, the page that you arrive at when you log in looks like this. Um, we'll call this the main menu. Most of the things that you need to access are located on the main menu, although you could explore the tabs on the top if you like. The link that we're gonna look at is the student housing and financial aid link, which also contains an area about your um, registration and your schedule. So that's what we're gonna talk about first. Um, so when you click, you're going to click on this link here. And I wanted to point out that the registrar has a handout on this particular area for you to view your full schedule. Um, so if you get lost in this particular um, presentation, you can always click there and get the handout for checking your schedule. So once you click on that link, so now we're in student housing and financial aid, you'll see on the top, it says registration. You are not registering. You have been registered by the ACE staff. The ACE staff has registered you according to your declared major. Once you click there, you're going to see two options. The week at a glance is very useful for planning your week. Um, I would recommend that you set up a calendar with all your courses in it on the wall and keep track of what's going on in this era of uh, remote instruction. Um, you are responsible for making it to your classes uh, just like you would in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, so the student detail schedule, that's going to allow you to see what the format of the class is. And then based on the format, we're going to give you some advice on what to do the first day of class. So either option is appropriate to see the classes, but the second option will tell you uh, where you're going to see the format of the class. Uh, keep in mind, you may be asked to select a term before you actually see the schedule. So the week at a glance looks like this. If your course does not have any meeting times, it's going to be listed down at the bottom. Uh, that can happen when the course is asynchronous, so it doesn't have a meeting time. Um, so asynchronous means that the learning path is established by the faculty member in Blackboard, um, where you can self-navigate um, and contact the faculty member as you need help going through the course. Um, so you can see when the student returns 
to campus, there are some clearly uh, uh, important buildings and times on here. Um, so in four weeks time, when you return to campus, you wanna make sure you know where these buildings are and um, how to get to them. Okay, so moving on to the page that's most important, let's look here at the designations of these courses. The only course that you should not attend the first day of classes unless they tell you to is the asynchronous online course. Uh, asynchronous means they don't meet um, during a specified time um, and the students are essentially following a schedule um, to go through the learning path of the course. Um, the online synchronous is always going to meet during the specified times using some sort of conferencing software such as Zoom, uh, Blackboard Collaborate, or some other application, maybe WebEx or um, other uh, specific application for that course. Okay, but you'll find Zoom and uh, Blackboard Collaborate are the two most common methods uh, to meet during the synchronous time. Okay, so you are expected to attend class um, during those times, just like any other class. The face-to-face -face classes, obviously, once you get to campus, you will be face-to-face -face and going to those rooms during those times. But assume while you are remote that they still will meet um, just like an online synchronous course, okay? So you wanna visit that Blackboard site and look for directions on how to meet the first day. Since these will be online meetings, you wanna make sure to figure out all the technology before the first day of classes, okay? Hybrid classes, again, those would be classes in which um, you're going to treat them as online synchronous until you return to class, okay? So assume that you will meet the first day in a synchronous fashion during the scheduled class time. This is the listing of all of the various modes of the classes for the fall semester once you return to campus. But just remember the online synchronous is the method all of these courses are going to follow with the exception of the online asynchronous. So we're going to assume face-to-face, -face, hybrid, high flex, and flex will operate in an online synchronous mode. Now, if the faculty member tells you otherwise, that's perfectly fine, but you're going to make sure to be there the first day, just in case, make sure to visit the Blackboard site and see what they're going to do, okay? Now, what if you don't see any courses in Banner? That's a problem because if you don't see any courses in Banner, you won't have access to Active Directory and therefore you won't have access to Blackboard. So you wanna check the same area we were before, the main menu under Student Housing and Financial Aid. And now we're going to click on the student account. And what we're looking for here is to make sure um, you don't have any holds and that you are validated. So validation is you've paid your bill, um, so you're fully cleared financially, or you've made arrangements for payments and you've made those first payments and you're, you're currently on track. So the university cannot give you access to your sensitive systems unless you are definitely planning on attending. And we only know that if you've paid your bills, paid your um, fees and um, have set up payment. Um, so clicking on this, you can see that you may have holds. So you're gonna view the holds. And as you can see, this particular student does not have any holds. Um, the holds on the account um, will have the department um, that's associated with it. At this point, it's likely it's going to be associated with the bursar if you have any holds. But you can see that this student is validated and a validation is uh, very important um, in terms of making sure you are successful in your first semester. If you do not become validated, what's going to happen is you're going to be delayed in attending your classes, you're going to be behind, and that is not going to be a good way to start out the semester. All right, finally, um, if your lack of validation or your hold is related to your financial aid award, you might want to check that here. So again, we're at the main menu, and then we're going at student, we're at student records, and we're at student records, and then we go to financial aid status, and then we look at the award. 
okay? The award year, and then you'll see that the financial aid has or has not been awarded. Um, so this is a page you would look at um, if you have concerns about whether or not your financial aid has been applied to your tuition, okay? So uh, sometimes when you receive a, an award of some type that comes from a private um, entity, it can take a while to process. And in that case, you want to make all the arrangements possible to let them know that's coming and how that's going to affect payment of your account. Um, otherwise, that's going to put a hold on your account and you won't have access for that particular semester's um, Blackboard courses. Okay, so make sure your course schedule is set. Make sure you have a schedule. Make sure you are financially cleared and then you can um, set up your active directory um, comfortably and proceed to your Blackboard courses. We're so sorry you can't be on campus for those first four weeks, but we look forward to uh, interacting with you virtually.